Hey photographers, the allure of a small camera is obvious, just so much easier to deal with. But typically, you have to give up something in exchange. Now on the Canon PowerShot G1X Mark III, except for interchangeable lenses, not so much. This is a significant improvement over the Mark II. First, there's the APS-C size sensor. That's large for a camera this size, larger than the Mark II and at 24 megapixels, about double the Mark II's 12. Then a viewfinder, a fully articulated touchscreen, built-in ND, full manual exposure controls, and the ability to save the direct from the camera raw files. Somehow, I think the changes are significant enough to warrant a new number, not just one more mark. Using a larger sensor is a big deal in my book. It's not the tiniest camera in this group, but you can easily tuck it away in a small bag. The largest dimension, width, is under 12 centimeters. And with battery and memory card, the G1X3 weighs 400 grams, 150 grams less than the Mark II. The recessed power button is on the right, thank you, and even with the retracting lens it powers up fairly quickly. Integrated shutter and zoom lever and the exposure compensation dial complete the top right side controls. There's a press and turn mode dial on the left, auto, four exposure modes, hybrid auto, more on that later, scene, video, and two custom positions. I'd have liked press and turn on the exposure compensation dial also, which is easily accidentally adjusted. There's a small manual flash and a flash shoe. Beside the screen, there's a video record button and a control pad surrounded by four buttons. A front side dial, context sensitive to adjust shooting settings. There's also a ring around the lens. The on-screen icon shows the current function. It's mostly a second zoom control, but supports other functions as well, selected in the menu. On the left side, connect an optional remote shutter release, USB, and HDMI ports. Neither USB or HDMI cable is included. SDXC and UHS-1 type cards are supported in a slot shared with the small battery. You can tell battery life will be a challenge. Tripod socket is too close to the car door and not centered under the lens. The LCD flips out to face forward, swivels up and down, and closes to protect the screen. It doesn't get better than that. The Mark III screen has an extensive set of touch features. There are very few items that are not touch enabled and very few things that can't be touch controlled. Of course, it's touch to focus and snap. Touch is also used for the on-screen quick menu, the main menu, and more features all through the interface. Generally speaking, if there's an outline around an object, it's touchable. Use the menu to activate touch and drag, so while shooting with the viewfinder, the screen works like a touchpad to select the focus point. The 2.3 million dot viewfinder is bright. The diopter adjusts enough to shoot without my glasses. The integrated lens zooms from 35 mm equivalent 24 to 72, and ramps from f2.8 when wide to f5.6 when zoomed in. It extends when powered up, and does a little in and out while zooming. In auto mode, scenes are detected automatically, as displayed in the upper left. By default, the screen dims after two seconds and powers down after 10 to save battery. Now, I find that too fast, so there are adjustments for this behavior in the menu. Eco mode turns this behavior off, and that enables the power saving settings, where you can adjust the time for display and full power down. Now, this is a touch screen, touch Q top right for the on-screen menu, and note that this doesn't work when an external monitor is connected. The menu is limited in auto mode, quality options for stills and video, self-timer, and aspect are the options. The menu can also be activated by pressing the center button. In full auto, raw files can be saved, not always the norm in small cameras. Switch to program mode for a more complete set of shooting options, like selecting a meter mode. 
Options include spot, center weighted, and evaluative, or matrix. By default, spot is not locked to the focus spot. That's enabled on screen 6, where the spot AE point can either be center or the autofocus point. Handy to have the option. In AV mode, which is pronounced aperture priority, use the front dial to adjust. The aperture can be closed to f16. In TV mode, pronounced shutter priority, use the front dial to select 30 seconds to 1 over 2000. In manual, the front dial is shutter the rear aperture. When you turn the dial, the appropriate setting appears above the exposure compensation at the bottom of the screen. Use the touchscreen to select the ISO, auto, or 100 to 25600. The auto ISO configuration in the menu only selects the maximum ISO. Most cameras now also provide a triggering shutter speed setting. At 6400, low light images were grainy, but going up, there's no color shift and mushiness appears only at 25.6. A single setting 3 stop ND filter can be activated. This can help keep the aperture wider for blurred background on stills or the shutter speed slower for motion blur in video. Press Info to change the screen display options, Clean, Status, and Status with Histogram and Level. The level is both left, right, and forward, backward tilt. Use Shooting Information Display to customize. And the menu also has options to enable the viewfinder to rotate to portrait mode, to display various composition grid overlays, and to customize the size and content of the histogram. This is small brightness. This is large RGB parade. Press the left of the control dial to select a focus mode, normal, macro, and manual. And there are three focus area selections, face, zone, and single spot. Now, while touch is the easiest way to select an area with zone and single, you can also press the focus area button and use the cursor control to move and select. Turn the lens ring to change the size, or turn the front dial to scroll through available positions. Now, I'm not sure of the advantage of macro mode. Either way, the closest focus distance is 10 centimeters. In manual focus mode, the up and down cursor controls set the focus, and the distance display on the right has two ranges. And note that as you zoom in, the closest focus distance gets further away. At full zoom, the closest distance is 30 centimeters. The magnify view appears on the LCD in the viewfinder, but not an external monitor. Press the right button to cycle through the magnify options. Press set to confirm focus, but once you do, you have to engage the manual focus mode using the left button again. For manual focus, use function assignment to change the lens ring from its default operation to focus. I find that easier, as manual focus is now engaged by simply adjusting the lens ring. Use the menu to turn on Peaking, a second manual focus assist option, with two levels and three colors. Peaking shows edges around the object in focus. In addition to the three times optical zoom, a digital zoom can extend the reach as long as you're not shooting raw. The white area is optical. According to the manual, the yellow area is acceptable degradation. The blue is noticeable degradation. Use the menu to control the extent of the digital zoom. Press Menu for the focus bracket. Three images are taken, one closer and one further than the focus point. The amount of variation can be set. Let's go back and have a look at the Scene Mode, which fronts a varied collection of features, including panorama, and effects like fisheye. And many of these are feature-rich. For instance, Self-Portrait includes on-screen touch buttons to change the background defocus, the scene brightness, the skin smoothing effect, and control the touch shutter. Each does more than I anticipate. Self-Portrait takes a single exposure, but Portrait Mode switches to Burst to take multiple exposures. The Mark III offers an alternate auto mode called Hybrid. When shooting in Hybrid Mode, each shot consists of a still preceded by a short video. It's interesting, but the Digest movie that's saved can be just a little bit random, unless you're really thinking about each shot as a combination of video and still. 
In addition to auto white balance, there are several presets and Kelvin settings. A custom white balance can be created from a still image. Canon's picture profile settings, or styles, include presets, but all can be modified using three sharpness parameters, strength, fineness, and threshold, as well as contrast, saturation, and color tone. Presets include neutral and black and white. Three user-defined settings can be created and saved. Increasing contrast and saturation creates your own super vivid look. And remember that these adjustments are only made to the JPEG file. You'll still have a clean RAW file to make other adjustments using Lightroom. The Lighting Optimizer adjusts contrast for images that don't suit a standard profile. And in the menu, use Highlight Tone Priority to reduce blown out highlights. I'm going to go back to scene mode again to show the HDR mode, which combines three exposures into a single image to capture a wider dynamic range. In addition to natural, there are four art versions, and here's what they look like. Art standard, the camera takes the three exposures, and it does take a few seconds to process. Vivid, bold, and embossed. And as long as we're here, this is the art bold scene effect and the water painting effect. Yeah, that just doesn't work for me. Canon's extensive playback menu includes several slideshow variations, including a digest filled with interesting transitions and effects. You'll probably want to edit down to your best images before you start. The digest can be saved as a movie, and the images can be pre-processed with a selection of color effects. This is more than is found elsewhere. Creative filters can be added to images, even if they're saved as JPEGs. And raw images can be processed to JPEG in batches. After selecting the images, set the brightness, white balance, picture style, and other settings, including size. The top of the control dial selects the drive mode. When shooting fine JPEGs with full manual settings, the Mark III can fire off 7 images per second for 4 seconds, and then slows to 4 per second. The self-timer found on the quick menu sets a 10 or 2 second delay, but also has a configurable selection, 1 to 15 seconds in single second increments, then 20, 25, and 30, and 1 to 10 shots. That's impressive flexibility for complex situations. Panorama, found on the scene menu, is pretty finicky. I found it very difficult to pan at a speed it found acceptable and to keep the camera level. Video mode is selected from the mode dial, but recording can be started from all modes. In some modes, like scene, the settings revert to standard when recording starts. In movie mode, the shutter button stops but won't start video recording. There are four settings in movie mode. Standard, this is the auto exposure setting for video. Select manual to set the shutter aperture and ISO. Short clips records for four, five, or six seconds. Speed settings include slow, normal, and fast options, and action replay, which plays the last two seconds in slow motion. Video can be recorded in 1920 by 1080 HD at 60, 30, and 24 frames, 720 and VGA at 30. After choosing a quality setting, the amount of time available is displayed at the top of the screen. When you start recording, that changes to elapse time. In manual mode, shutter, aperture, and ISO can be adjusted while recording. Touch the screen to focus on a subject. Press the flash button on the controller to change the lens ring function while shooting. The display across the bottom shows the current setting. Note that it takes a lot of turning to change the zoom. And unfortunately, even when the ring is set to focus for manual focus, that function is not available in video mode. Also note that the display can't be changed while recording video. Video files are limited to 4 gigabytes which at 1080-30 means about 23 minutes. There's a tiny beep when recording stops. Bandwidth is a modest 24 megabits per second. Recordings are saved in MP4 files. At 1080-60, time is limited to about 10 minutes with a data rate of 37 megabits, so well before it hits 4 gigs. 
Canon does offer an interesting auto level feature, so even when the Mark III isn't quite level, activating the setting will level the shot. So between ad-libbing as well as walking and talking, I'm not the best candidate for vlogging. But I'm giving it a shot with this because it's got that nice swivel out screen so you can see yourself as you're shooting. That makes it good for selfies as well. Uh, what I'm liking here is the stabilization, which seems to be working well, and the autofocus system. Now I've got it on face detect and it has actually detected my face, so I'm enjoying that quite a bit. I'm using manual exposure here as I go, and I've set the shutter to 1 60th, of course, and the aperture to 5.6. I'm letting auto ISO do the rest of the work. Now, it does have an ND filter, which if the day was a little sunnier, I'd probably have turned on just to keep the aperture in control. The one thing that it doesn't have is a mic input, or level display, or level control. So if you do want better audio, as I do, and that's what I'm doing actually, I'm dual system recording, I'm wearing a clip mic here, and I'm recording that on my phone, I'll synchronize those two when I do my editing. There is live HDMI out. It's 1080 60 frames regardless of the video record setting. There are no settings or options to manage the output. To get a clean output, change the display before you start recording. The touch screen doesn't work when an external monitor is connected. Audio appears on the HDMI output only during playback. And I've already mentioned some of the other features that don't work when an external monitor is connected. A setup wizard uses Bluetooth to make the connection between a smartphone and the camera, and then sets up Wi-Fi without ever leaving the app, even on an iPad. First time I've seen that. Browse the photos on the phone, then transfer either original or smaller size, and the app also functions as a remote control for both stills and video. I didn't find it very reliable. A battery charger is included. The G1X Mark III can be charged using USB and can be powered using USB, but only playback mode is available while charging. Now, I did not fall in love with the Canon G1X Mark III, but it is a powerful and capable camera. In this size, the APS-C sensor makes it a standout model. Its major drawback for some will be the lack of 4K video. It can be simple to use if that's what you need, but there are enough features for those who enjoy the complications of photography. I'm always happy to have your civil comments and relevant questions. Subscribers, you have my thanks. And if you don't count yourself among them, I'd be happy to have you join us. Thanks for watching.